Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Where are we headed, baby? We're starting our trek toward Colorado. Yes. Or the west side of Colorado. Yes, we are. To see so James right and now Scarlett. we're going to do a bus hookup. Show. Yes, a so, lot of people have asked right. about uh, do we tow a car? How do we tow a car? What system do we use and can we show it? Yeah, sure. So, so that's what we're going to do right now. Yeah. So away we go. There's our little car. Debbie's pulled it around already and uh, put it in place. So now we're just going to show the hookup and it's pretty simple, isn't it, baby? That's very simple. Okay. You want to go right over there and that way you can film okay. it from that side, I think. Yep. It would work okay. Oops. Whoa, don't fall down. No. Okay. This, we just put this cover over when we stop. It just makes it look like a little bit less of a mess. And then this is a Falcon 2 Roadmaster, uh -huh. right? Uh huh. Very easy to hook up. Just release it right there. And we're going to take this, pull this out so it doesn't uh, get all angled. Pull uh, out a pin and, oops, release this one. There we go. Put the pin back in. Turn that around so I can see the hole. There it is. Now the other side. That's pretty easy so far. Isn't and it? the part that's on the front of the car, you can take off if you want. Right. That whole thing. That comes whole off. thing. Yeah. And it comes off with just two pins. It's real easy. Sometimes I take it off because if you're going down a bumpy road, it makes a little noise. The car in the car by itself if will in the car, car by rattle. Itself, yeah. So. Yeah. So, this is uh, the important part. It's all hooked up already. Whoops. There we go. Okay. Now, this is a safety right here. And there's a little place where you hook it up. What that does is if your car comes loose, that slams the brakes on the car. Yep. Okay, so uh, we have to have the, the other two bag. cables are right here. And oh, I put the black bag in the car, I think maybe. Okay. <clears throat> yep. These are our safety chains, and uh, they're absolutely necessary. Very easy to do. It's Hook that one in there. Then there's a little rubber keeper that just keeps it from bouncing off. But since we have these curly ones, they don't bounce off any, wouldn't bounce off anyway because they have tension. See, so don't have to worry about them coming off, but I put those on anyway. And then this side, we're going to do the same thing. Just going to hook it up. Hook this end up. And... Uh, we are hooked up except for electric. There we go. So now, let me lift this up. Uh -huh. There we go. <coughs> now my electric, I've got it, it's hooked up in here. I, always, I just leave it always hooked up on this side. And uh, then all I have to do, I put a little clamp here to have something to put it over. Um, but. All this just comes right out and goes right to the car. What was that? Oh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> I think it was on our car. Oh, it was. Was it? Okay. On our bus. On our bus. Okay. okay, so there's a little ridge on the top that goes up. And then you just stick that on there. And that goes right in. And that locks it on. Now, I just get enough, how much ever I want right there. There we go. All the excess I pull back up in here and hook right back where it was. So, uh, there we go. And then, my part. And then your part. Yep. Okay. 
There are certain cars you can tow and certain you cannot tow flat down. We wanted one you could tow flat. Without putting it on a trailer? Without having to have a trailer or a dolly. Right. So, um, just certain years before, the ground, babe. before maybe 2011, yeah. is that what you said? I think that's correct. On the CRVs. Anything so, what? Before 2011. Here you go. We have a 2000. Have <laughs> thank you. We have a 2007. Uh huh. CRV. We did have a 2004. Uh huh. And um, it works great for towing. And it says if your car can be towed, like the Honda CRVs at least, you will see it in the uh, manual. And it tells you what to do. So you start by starting it out, put it in park, and then you run it down through all the gears. And that lubricates right. the transmission. And then you take it back up. To neutral. To neutral. Uh -huh. And you're going to leave it there and let it run for three minutes so the transmission fluid and everything will get, it'll get all lubricated really, really well. That's correct. Then you, when you get finished with the three minutes, you're going to turn the key to, oops, only to where it says one, not all the way off. And where you turn it, just one click to the one, and you should still be able to move the steering wheel and everything, but the lights won't be on. So it won't run the battery down. Doesn't run your battery down that way. Um, if you put it on the wrong deal, um, it will run your battery down. There you go. <laughs> okay. okay. So then afterwards, we have this thing here. Now what we had before was called an Invisibrake, and I love it. I like it better than this because this one you have to actually put in every time. The other one you don't have to. So it's big and bulky, and the. I'm probably going to get a Invisibrake, Invisibrake and put in sometime but right now we just stick this thing in there that goes the back part goes up against the front seat and this part here goes up against the uh, I mean it hooks over the brake and then uh, uh, when you plug it in it just has a little air system it pumps up yep. that way when you put on the brake in the bus it puts on the brake in the car and there are certain states that require you to have a separate yes. braking system. Oklahoma does not, but Colorado does. Colorado does, and since we're going to Colorado, we'll be putting it in. That's that, correct. So. That's correct. And here's the beautiful place we've been. We've been here for the last three years. Well, not three years straight. No. <laughs> uh, for about a week and a half to two weeks for the last three years. And they have all these little boathouses out here. I just like this place. It's real nice. And uh, this is in Oklahoma. It's actually at a Lawton, Oklahoma uh, park, city park. And that's a part of their water source, that lake is. And then there's some people that live here all the time. I think it, he said they cost them $250 a month to park there and they have electricity and water and sewer. So uh, that's nice. Okay, so here we are. We've got it all hooked up and Jim's starting the bus. to drive no wind today and we've had high winds since we've been here for about a week or so yeah uh, but the now first week no wind and then this week right. has been windy. first week no wind then about probably 10 days where we had pretty high wind and now no wind again so we're just uh, headed out we're going to go through Lawton 
and uh, down that direction we're just following what the 770 tells us to do here it tells you which and route you should take with your rig that's right because we put all our measurements and weights into the 770 and then it uh, tells you what are the best routes yeah okay yeah that's it this is a little tiny, tiny place called Porter Hill. Yep. But it does have a Valero station now. Yep. And uh, this is just on the way to Lawton from Apache, Oklahoma. And right here's a sign that says Altus, 69 miles. Lawton 11. Lawton 11 miles. Well, we're just passing Fort Seal. And I would say that there's probably a few of you that spent some time at Fort Seal. I certainly did. I was drafted back in 70 and uh, spent some time spent some time here at Fort Seal and Fort Polk, Louisiana. And Fort Sam Houston. Fort Sam Houston, San Antonio, Texas. But we're just just passing Fort Seal, and uh, there's the polo grounds right there. Still, still there. And uh, all the crazy, stupid stuff that's gone on. It's hard to get on and off the base. I remember, no, they had a guard in the gate when we were kids, but you certainly didn't have to stop. You just went on in. Sitting Bear Creek. And they have some pretty nice housing now. And if you were here before, you probably remember Cash Road. Well, this is uh, Cash Road, Lawton, Oklahoma. And they got about everything here now. Home Depot, Buffalo Wild Wings, Lots of traffic. Golden Corral, just about everything seems to be open now too. And I don't see any very, very, very few masks do I see. So that's a good thing. Back to normal. Back to normal almost. There's two Walmarts in town. The new one way out on this side of town, on the west side of town, is a, I guess what you would say, classier. It's newer, nicer. We try not to buy at Walmart too much. We try to buy as much as we can from mom and pop stores, local. Sometimes you just can't find what you need without going to Walmart, but that's what we do. Okay, here's some cotton fields that have not been harvested yet. We've been seeing these all along here. And then there's also some cotton fields, some cotton fields that have been harvested that we've seen some uh, really pretty bales with bright pink, bright pink bales wrapping there. around them. And over there, way across there, you'll see some yellow ones. We'll come up close to It's some pretty more. cool. But I just wonder if any of you have ever picked cotton. Jim, I think you, what you did was oh, cotton. chopped cotton. Chopped a bunch of cotton, yeah. Chopped cotton, yeah. And uh, with some other people that we knew that went to the church we went to and everything. But they were all stripping cotton by the time I came back here. Yep. So they don't um, they don't use people to go out there and pick cotton like they used to, of course. But I pulled bowls a few times. My mom would take us with her when she went out to uh, 
she went out to pull bowls. Okay, he's pointing to something I need to well, some, uh, look at. Oh, those yellow. Those, okay. The yellow and the pink. The yellow and the pink. Big old deals here. We were okay. young, and they stripped cotton. They put it in square bales. Square round bales, that's right. Round bales. Yep. And they have different colors. That's kind of cool. Blue, I don't know yellow. if you can even see them. I can't seem to get my oh, zoom. zoom. I can't get it to work for some reason. But anyway, uh, I I went with my mom sometimes, and she went out to pull bowls. I don't want to. And. And anyway, that was all I was going to say, is Here's just that right I went with her a few times, and we pulled bowls. And I think I was more of a hindrance than a help. But I did go with her, and we did pull bowls a few times. Now, of course, they don't use people to do it. They use machines. So, anyway, just interesting, I thought. Okay, right up here, you can see this is Veterans Drive. And if you turn right, right here, you go right out to um, Altus, Altus Air, Air Force Base. And some of you who are in the Air Force probably have been here. Well, apparently this is downtown Altus. Been to Altus lots of times, but I don't think I ever came to the downtown area. City of Altus. Actually, kind of a pretty little city. Thrive Church, right there. See that in that old building? No, I can't. Oh, right up there. Okay, I believe you. And then there's wigs and more if you needed a wig. Well, now we're coming into a little town called Duke, Oklahoma. Right there. Cotton fields right up to the first house. Yep. This is cotton country down here. 35. That's a neat place. Well, we're on Raton Pass. We're coming up over the top of the mountain here, so we're going to head down now. But uh, just getting ready to come into Colorado. And now we're on a 2% grade downhill. Looky there, came out of the fog. Isn't that amazing? So here we go. This says we're gonna have a 6% grade for a while. Well, we're getting pretty close to Gunnison, Colorado. Uh, we've made pretty good time today. Didn't take any pictures going over the pass because it was snowing. I took one. Oh, did you? Okay. I had one on my phone. I uh, pretty much, pretty much had to put total focus on driving down those hills. But this is a beautiful area coming into Gunnison. 